Hello and welcome to another walkthrough video for Enlight POS powered by Dark. In the previous video, we looked at how to make a quick ticket. In this scenario, we're going to assume that Diane has plenty of time to wait for us to detail her items and we don't have a long queue of customers waiting behind her. So to get started creating an invoice, we're going to hit the new invoice button. This is our screen for detailing invoices. It's very powerful because all of your customer's invoicing needs can be handled from this very screen. We found that as employees have to work through more screens to accomplish an action, they create more errors and also it takes longer to train them. The screen is organized with categories and sub items on the left and modifiers on the right. All of the buttons and images that you see here are customizable and the layout is customizable as well. So for example, if you don't need all of these modifiers, maybe you don't capture color, we can eliminate those for you and add more of the buttons that you're used to working with. To get started, an employee would simply click on a category, for example, men's suit. And then from the list of items, these would be all of the items that you have configured under men's suit for your store. We're gonna say pick men's three-piece tuxedo. To begin, the employee can simply click or touch one of the categories, for example, men's suit. Then the third column dynamically updates and displays for us all of the options that we have listed under men's suit. I'm going to pick men's three-piece tuxedo. You see that the item updates right away. It says men's three-piece tuxedo. It's got a D for dry cleaning to identify the service category that we're working with. Once I have the tuxedo selected, I can add additional details if that's the way your dry cleaner operates. I can say that the tuxedo is black, maybe it's more of a dark charcoal, and that it's plain, and that it's made of silk. All of the details are captured on the line item. I can also add upcharges to any of these modifiers. So for example, if silk is harder for me to clean, I can add an amount to that button so that whenever it is used, the upcharge is automatically included in the line item. If I needed to repair an item, it's very easy as well. I will select a shirt. It's gonna be a golf shirt, and I'm gonna say we're gonna repair. It's gonna ask me if I wanna include repair with cleaning. I'm gonna say yes, just to be thorough. And then it displays for me all of the repair options that I have configured for this category. We picked a golf shirt, so I'm gonna pick shirt sleeve hem. And immediately you'll see that it dropped the shirt sleeve hem into the line item list. It did it with a T for tailoring, and it also added an item for the golf shirt, which we said we would clean. So this one has a tag of TD for tailoring and dry cleaning. So I always remember to clean the item as well, not just tailor it. If I need to record a spot or damage on an item, I'm gonna select a fancy dress, and I'm gonna say that it's got a spot. When I click this button, all of my damage options appear. These are configurable from the back end. I'm going to say that this dress has ink on it. The damage is recorded on the item. And if I have a webcam attached to my computer, I can also take a picture of the damage and attach it to the ticket. Later, I can email that to the customer so that everyone is on the same page regarding the damage that was found on the item. If I need to add additional upcharges, I can just hit the upcharge button. All of them appear. These are customizable from the back office. You can also manage a press-only pricing schedule. To begin, I'm going to select an item. I'm going to select this sweater. I'm going to say it's a heavy sweater. And then I'm going to hit press-only. Immediately, the press-only is added to the line item. It's recorded with a P tag for press-only. And then the pricing will update to whatever you have listed in your press-only pricing schedule. If I receive an item that I'm not used to working with or maybe is not included in my pricing schedule, I can select any item as a base, for example, this coat, and then press the manual item button and adjust the description and any upcharges that I may need to record for this manual item. This item will not be added to your pricing schedule. This will be handled for an individual case item. From this screen, I can also adjust the starch level for any item, and I can also do redo or no charges. Next, let's look at the discount and prepay options. By hitting this button, I pull up the discount and prepay window. All of these discounts are configured in your back office. Same with your coupons. I can select to which items the discounts will apply. And finally, if the customer wishes to, I can select prepay and be taken to the pick and pay screen where I can charge my customer. 
when the customer pays, the ticket will be labeled prepaid so that I know that it's already been paid by this customer. If you work with barcodes, it's very easy to scan the barcode and register it to a garment. So I'm going to scan a barcode. Once the barcode is scanned, I hit enter and an empty line item is automatically created for me. This will record whatever item I select next. I selected the small jacket. It's already got the barcode recorded right on the item. I could add details if I want to. And because I'm already inside the customer, in this case, Diane Prince, this barcode is already registered to this customer for this line item and I can move on to my next item. Okay, having gone over all those features very quickly, I'm gonna clean up this queue here and just select a couple of items so that we can see what gets printed when we hit the print button. Before I hit the print button, I do wanna mention that you have several options when you go to print. You can email the customer receipt directly to your customer. You can split the items on your invoice however you like between different shop tickets. You can do that manually or you can let the system automatically split them by service type. For now, I'm just gonna select the regular print option and we'll review the documents that print. And we'll be doing that in the next video. See you there.